and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal Ann Compton and I'm so happy to be here with you today. I hope that wherever you are on the planet today, that you are thriving, that you are blessed, that you are healed, that you are happy and filled with joy. Yes. In today's video, I am actually going to be sharing with you my recent Life Magnetics podcast episode. By the way, if you're not subscribed or listening, you really should be because the content is awesome. Uh, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking to Beth Dana. Beth Dana is in the world of finance, but she's also spiritual. And she talks to us today about money mindset and money consciousness. And I just think it's so interesting that I tend to attract and meet guests kind of um, according to theme. Like sometimes I'll have guests and they're all about energy healing. And then sometimes I'll have like a string of guests and it's all about psychic abilities or psychic medium stuff. And then I'll have guests who are about the consciousness of money. And that's just been recently. Like the whole month we have been talking, the last month and really into early Thanksgiving, we were talking about money and abundance and really switching the way that we think and feel about the energy or the currency of money so that we can attract more. And as Beth Dana talks about in this video, money really does touch everything. Money is connected to everything. It impacts and affects relationships. It can stabilize relationships. It can destabilize relationships. It allows access for health and wellness and fitness. It provides opportunities or closes the doors to opportunities. So understanding what money is and how we're connected to it spiritually and, of course, in this 3D reality so that we can work with the tool of money I think is so important. So I offer now this episode to you. I hope it really serves you and helps you to start envisioning for yourself for your 2023, something new, something good, and something perfect for your experience. I will say before we get to it that I ended this video asking Beth Dana about some maybe like her thoughts about what's coming down the line for money and finances in 2023 because there's a lot of economic rumblings around that. And she's not a prognosticator. She's not a psychic medium, but she did have some thoughts and I thought they were really interesting. So make sure you watch to the end. All right. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. I'd like to welcome Beth Dana to the Life Magnetics podcast. Beth is the author of the Make Money Your Partner book series and founder of Wealth Living, a nonprofit organization designed to create leaders through learning new ways of conscious living. She intertwines her business interests with a passion for philanthropy and supports people in healing their relationship with money. Yes, we need you from the inside out, guiding people to find true inner peace, happiness and freedom. Welcome, Beth. We're so happy to have you. We do need you. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity, Crystal. I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here and along with your community. So thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. I just think that we're in such an interesting time on the planet with um, so much of what's being programmed all the time into us. And a lot of it is fear and lack and scarcity and the recession is coming and gas prices. So I know people listening are some of them are in a panic. They don't know what they're going to do. They don't know if they're going to have enough. And so I've really wanted to be focusing on how we can reset that mindset so that we can be calm and at peace and attract those things that we desire. Um, so we're going to have that conversation for sure. But before we do, I definitely wanted to learn more about you, the person that you were before you became the person that you are like what led up to your work with money consciousness like were you a broke woman <laughs> were you a broken woman like how did you heal yourself like what's your story that was all of it girl <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i mean you know i grew up in a single mother household so i watched my mom struggle so that was my my started you know shaping my paradigm and my belief system around money i saw my mom working really hard multiple jobs at times. So I equated working hard to earning money. So that started my, my belief in that. And if I wasn't constantly working, then it wasn't going to show. Right. And so it wasn't until I really learned about, um, you know, the beauty of pausing and waiting and also allowing. <laughs> so that, that's the, the ebb and flow. Right. And so that really shaped, you know, uh, a lot of my beliefs around, around money. I, I have struggled in money, you know, um, there's been times where I've had lots of debt and felt strapped and shackled to, uh, 
to creditors and and, um, and and that's something I'll never do again. Uh, I've had, you know, in shifting my relationship with money, I, I, I get to be in the driver's seat and I get to, to be, you know, in control of, of what I, I get and versus the other way around, which is I know how a lot of people feel when you start accumulating a lot of debts and, and, and stuff and things, and it just starts feeling like these things have us. And so the, the conversation and the relationship with money is complex. It touches every aspect of our life. And so that's the beautiful work that's being done here is that as we're healing our relationship with money, we're healing other, other areas, our relationships, our physical, you know, our, 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 the way our health is, you know, and so there's so many different areas in our life that transform along the way. And so, you know, and I was even married, uh, we had cars and house and things and, and then I got divorced and then there was that whole reinvention of myself and, and realizing I didn't set myself up in such a way. And this was before I got into the financial industry. And I, I, I was like, wow, you know, I'm a smart woman, but the thing is, is I was like a traditional wife. I, we put all our stuff together and I didn't set myself up in an empowering way. And so when I decided that I wanted to leave the marriage, I started strategizing. And so one of the things that I really empower women is look, we, we don't get into relationships thinking that we're going to break up. Right. But be, or that some, or somebody's going to pass away. We're, we know we're all going to die, but we don't know. Right. So the only thing we can ever do is really empower ourselves and just set up different accounts. And it's not for lack of transparency or hiding or anything like this. It's just, it's to be empowered, to know that I've got this for myself in case anything does happen. You know, I was married before as well, a couple of times actually, and I'm married now, but in my second marriage, <clears throat> it's so interesting because he was a man of means. He was an attorney, he was a litigator and made a very big wage but we were constantly in debt <laughs> we were constantly living beyond our means and i remember how that affected me energetically and spiritually like i would if i had the misfortune to wake up in the middle of the night i would just be racked with this cold dread this anxiety and fear like such anxiety over money and i would just pray 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 like someday hopefully i'm not going to be so afraid of money. And for me, I come from poverty, honey. Okay. Some people say I grew up poor. No, I grew up no running water, no electricity. My dad was a substance abuser. We lived in the forest of Hawaii in the dark. Okay. And so I really was poor. And so much of that was modeled to me, demonstrated to me, and it, it really immersion, cellular, this poverty that even all these years later, I still feel like I've got scripts in there that bubble to the surface that I have to deal with all of the time, such fear around money. And I think that's the first thing that we need to um, deactivate. How do you deactivate fear around money? Because I don't imagine you can really manifest it if you have fear with it, or maybe you can. Yeah, well, it, it's a practice. It's a daily practice, just like anything else. And this is what I encourage people to do is start having money be your daily practice. Connect with your money. Don't be afraid of it. You know, notice, Notice when your emotions go into fear-based emotions and, and transfer those as much as you can into, into abundance, joyful, happy moments. Like, you know, it, it may suck that you're having to pay bills right now, but look at it as an opportunity. Like, I am so grateful to be able to have the money to pay my bills right now so that I can have the lights on, right? And so being in gratitude. So notice, knowing that it's, a, it's an ongoing practice, this is deep-seated, secular work. Like my, my healing is also my mama's healing, right? Right. It's also my grandmother's healing in everything, including money. It's energetic. So the more we can start really shifting into our energetics around money and our mindset around our abundance and going into that deep seated, that's where it's going to, it's going to start clicking. Cause you're right. It, it is, it'll, it will continue to show up just like everything, right? In your spiritual practice, you get triggered, things show up because it's always there for a lesson. Same thing in our relationship with money. Yes. And I think it's so important when you find yourself in a triggered response, whether it's to money or anything else, instead of like, uh, buying into that, leaning into that, just noticing it and saying, Oh, another invitation to check it out and see what we can heal here. 
You know, with spiritual people, and um, I, I talk to a lot of them, they tend to find like the subject of money to be shallow and superficial. Like, why are you attaching money to spirituality? Isn't spirituality free? And spiritual practitioners, I've known many of them, um, like have this resistance to charging anything for the things that they offer because there's this kind of idea or stigma around money that it's evil or the root of all evil. What do you say to that? Yeah, I mean, I would really invite them to look at why they look at money as such an, an evil or a bad thing. You're here to give gifts to your world. You get to be financially compensated for that. If there's a life that you truly want and desire, and you just happen to be uh, running your business in this you know, through healing work, coaching, whatever it might be, your gifts and values are, get, get to be compensated. And in how we do that in, in the 3D world <laughs> is money, right? I mean, uh, it used to be probably back in the day, if you were, you know, in a community and you did bartering, then that probably worked for you. But in our world right now, we need money, money, right? But the thing is, is, you know, money isn't everything, right? We know that. But if we truly want to get out of fear and get to that next level in our life, money is a tool. That's what it is. So really, I invite, you know, the listeners to really start reframing and having a better relationship with money and looking at it as your friend. Look at how it can support you in transforming your business. Look at how it can support you with making a difference in a bigger way and, and helping more people, right? And, um, and, and having the lifestyle that you want also in, in, in that, right? So looking at money as for what it is, and it's a tool because we know currency comes in so many different forms. Currency is an energy, money, time, resources. So looking at all of that, it, it as equal, equal players to, you know, leveling ourselves up. Yes. Money is a tool. And so the tool serves us. We don't serve the tool. Like it's right. supposed to be something that complements our life. Take right. it back to you and your personal experience. So what are some of the first things you did to kind of reset your money mindset, your relationship with money and start manifesting in a different way? Like what are some of your tips, tricks, exercises that might help someone else? Well, it's great because that's how actually I started writing the book series. Mm -hmm. I started doing these practices and, you know, and learning that, you know, it, there is a spiritual component to our relationship with money and, and healing that. And so, um, so mo most of the stuff that I, I do even today is all in my books. So, mm -hmm. you know, meditation, gratitude, you know, really shifting when my mindset is in fear or any type of lack and really just noticing and leaning into that. Where's that coming from? That's not serving me. That's not the woman that is matching and, and really honing in like with my vision. That's the biggest thing I can say for right now, because we're in such an uncertain time, right? We have so many outside circumstances, external systems that just are making people unhappy. Uh, uncertain of times, uh, unhealthy, disconnected. And so how do we be bigger than what, what's happening, right? Um, and so how we get to do that is, is really staying true to who we are and staying true to our values and staying true to our vision. And so the clearer that you can get on your vision, the more aligned you'll be with where, where you're going. And so when all of this noise around us is happening, you can hone into your vision and really step into to that person because, you know, the world is always going to be riddled in fear. It's how we choose to relate to it. That's, that's, that's the other thing because everything's cyclical, right? What's happening right now in our world. Yeah. It's slightly different because it's always different, but you know, we had downturns in the market in 2008 housing markets went up. We had inflation, like those things, are always cyclical. So how can we best prepare ourselves for a cyclical nature? And how do we get to best prepare our internal world for what's going on externally? I love what you're saying here about the vision. Um, <clears throat> I used to be a Christian. 
a fundamentalist Christian. I mean, a missionary and a preacher, honey. Okay, so I know Bible. And so sometimes the Bible scriptures come back to me. And one of the scriptures that I've always held on to is that a people perish for a lack of vision. Like a people perish for lack of vision. Like you have to have a governing vision for your life and then subvisions for your money, your health, and all of these things. Can you give us some guidance around like how to even create a vision for your money? Like somebody might hear you say that, but like, I don't know necessarily how to do that. Yeah. And I love that you're quoting scripture. I think there's, there's a lot that we could, you don't have to be Christian, right? The Bible is a great tool. So in times like now go to the Bible, mm -hmm. if, if, if that's what feels right for you, because there's, there's a lot of like. It, it's it's got a lot of great tools for us, right? Yes, I'm getting goosebumps. I mean, there are some scriptures there that are so magical for manifestation, for money, for all of it. They're like affirmations. All, all of life. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it talks about the renewing of the mind. Like when you yes. start really looking at the Bible and really reading the scriptures, it's like our handbook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's phenomenal, it, it is. So it, at any rate, so thank you for that. And um, so going to the vision and so, so yeah, so paint this picture. If if three years, five years is too far out, start with a year. What does your year look like? And how much is this life going to cost you? And then start writing that down. You know, if you want to live at a in a house that's overlooking the water, an apartment overlooking the water, how much do you think that's going to cost you in your area, right? Uh, if you want to start entertaining more or going out more and networking, and so those are things that are going to cost you, and so write these things down. Like what does your lifestyle get into the feeling of it? Describe it as much as you can get into the feeling of it. Really, really lean into, to, you know, the visual and the feeling, right? As we know, the feeling really is what triggers everything. It's the in secret a good, in, a, in a good way. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah. So, so getting into that and then, and then, you know, how much will it cost you? And, and do it in today's dollars, because obviously you're not going to know what, what a year or three or two, three or five, five years brings. But, you know, you can realistically do it in today's uh, today's economy dollars. So uh, that that's what I would start doing. And then because what what happens a lot of times is people are like, oh, if I had a million dollars. I would have the life of my dreams. Well, your lifestyle may not actually cost a million dollars. That's what's exciting. Like, even if you chose that you wanted to donate like 10% of your income every month, which is I, what I encourage people to do in our budget allocation is to first donate because as we're giving, we're, we're, we're receiving and just trusting that we're just, it's just the flow and, and it, it is about the tool and how we can, you know, provide and, and support others and ourselves. Right. And so it's like, how do we get to step into this person that's matching this vision? So sometimes when a person wants to manifest something, it doesn't necessarily feel possible. Like I can say I want to be a billionaire, but can I really feel being a billionaire? I can feel maybe being a 10,000 heir or a 100,000 heir. I'm speaking for people out there. Is there an issue with not being able to hook into the feeling of what's possible? And does that kind of, I know we can have a vision for it, but without the feeling of being able to do it and that it's possible, like we, we tend to not be able to manifest it. Is there something that we can do to replace what doesn't feel possible with, with what is actually possible? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And again, that takes work and practice because we, we have learned a lot that needs to be unlearned. Right. And that takes time. So be patient and graceful with yourself and just honor whatever's coming up. And just know I'm on, this is my practice. I'm getting better every day, I'm getting better every day. So, and be realistic with the goals, right? Of course I want to be a millionaire. Yeah. But what really, what's, what really resonates intuitively with you right now? It might be, Hey, I want to start making 10 grand a month, but realistically what feels more in alignment is 5,000 a month. Well, then start there, like really feel into what feels right. Um, and then, and then of course, grow, grow bigger, um, in, into that. Right. But, but really feel what, uh, what feels in, in alignment with where you're at, not only from your story, mm -hmm. but where, where you're currently at. Right. So it's, it's about stretching yourself and then obviously starting the practices around the, the mindset. I hope I answered that. 
No, I think you did. And I, I think that okay. it does take discipline and training of the mind. I did hear one tip. I wonder if you've heard it or if you endorse it. Someone said to increase or to stretch the possibility to actually carry around a great deal of money, like for you. So maybe like I barely carry cash because I'm always using cards. But if I had an issue with money, maybe I would carry around $1,000 or $3,000, just enough to scare you a little bit. But to get you acquainted energetically with having a lot of money in your field and in your energy. And I always thought that was an interesting idea. I've never tried it. I don't know if you've heard of that before. Mm, no, I mean, I have heard of different, you know, different little tricks and methods and things like that. And and you got to do what really resonates with you, you know, um, I, I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of like things that we can do for that, but the, the mindset is so powerful. The more we can focus on shifting our mindset, um, you know, you can carry around a crystal or you can do this or whatever, but until you shift the mindset, that crystal is not going to mean anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Um, so like you've got to be able to, to really hone in on, on the mindset and shifting. And so meditate, visualize, create a little, uh, movie, uh, or, you know, if you want a vision board, you know, put it, uh, put it above, you know, your workspace or, uh, create like a little movie thing on your phone and just, just glance at it every once in a while, get connected with it. Cause the thing is, is our timing is much different than God's timing or the universe's timing. So again, being patient, because as we're continuing to be in these healthier, more abundant practices, things may not, may not be showing up the way we think they are, but it's not to say things aren't working around us. So just constantly be the con consistent practice. Meditation is the best thing we can do to clear our mind space when things get chaotic and then reconnect to your vision, reconnect to your vision. Well, let's talk about your books, because I know you have, I'm on Amazon right now, I was looking through your books. You've got a three book series. I'm not sure if you have other books, but let's talk about those and what brought you to write them and what those books kind of generally cover. Yeah, so I was actually in the financial industry at the time. And so the first book uh, came out in 2019. And uh, I was just really called uh, to write this this book. Um, and it really, again, stemmed from some of these practices that I was doing, you know, and healing my relationship with money. And, um, and so I, I started, you know, putting this, this, they're all journal based. So I started putting together this, this book. And then when I got the book, I, I saw it as like, you know, kind of a, a generating tool for clients at the time being in the industry, because I recognized that mindset was such a huge proponent you know, you could teach people and they're super excited because the most households or schools, we weren't taught about money, right? And so it wasn't until we came into adulthood and maybe learned it from, you know, maybe friends or family or learned it the hard way, <laughs> just by trial and error. Uh, and so I I would teach them basic fundamentals of, of financial education and they get so excited because it would be the first time they'd hear a lot of it. And uh, then I would follow up with them as a client and you could hear the mindset just shift just over the phone. I could hear it. And I was like, wow, this is, this is like what, this is what's missing. And so not only that, but I, I recognize that the heart centered, compassionate approach with Smith missing. It's really just, you know, about product driven and, and, and just the, just very masculine action oriented environment. So that's really what, what started the, the first book. And then after I got the first book, I realized there's more work here. And that's when I started to, uh, putting together book two and book three. And so the, the three book series makes for a 90 day journey, which is really great because it takes somebody from the, the wellness and healing, um, you know, their belief system all the way through to laying a foundation to their vision and really connecting with that. So is this, are the three books exercise based and journal based the, the entire three books? Yes, oh, interesting. They are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very interested. Um, <clears throat> so you mentioned at the top of this interview that, you know, when you heal within yourself, certain consciousness patterns around money, you heal your mom's stuff, you heal your grandma's stuff. And there's this idea of epigenetics and ancestral trauma, ancestral curses, ancestral lineage. And I am of the opinion that some of us are walking around with 
our ancestor stuff inside of us. We just don't know it. We, we think it's ours because it's in us, but I want to ask you an interesting question. How might somebody who has some of these ancestral issues around money, how might that, how might they recognize that in themselves? Maybe their life is okay. Maybe they're not rich, but they're, you know, they're, they're not struggling necessarily, but they could be doing so much more with money and they're not recognizing some of these patterns within them. Is there something that shows up in the life to tip us off that we've got issues? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's so many different ways. I mean, you mentioned being married and, and having lots of money come in, but then there was like no, no money left over. Right. So it's not to say that because somebody has a lot of money that they don't have, uh, you know, limiting beliefs or, or stories around money that need, get to be healed. And so, um, it doesn't matter where, how, how are you, how, how is the person relating with money? Are they, are they generating a lot of money, but still in a fear-based read, like all of those types of ways of being, or are you in a more loving, compassionate, generous, kind, you know, because uh, it really builds our character. And so it's really about looking about who, who we are as a person, because the money doesn't define us, our credit score doesn't define us. Those can all be rebuilt. Um, you know, back and, and backed up. It's it's who we get to become in the process. And so, if we're looking at things that are are uh, you know generational and and um, things like this, I, I it, it's it's I guess, again it's a journey, right? Because not only are we healing ourselves along the way, but you'll start you'll start seeing other stuff that just starts showing up. That's just miraculous. And even in the relationships between you and the other person, um, if you know if they're still uh, alive today, and you'll start see seeing a shift in in the relationship. And that's why I say money touches everything. When we can start really healing this relationship with money stuff, <laughs> the things around us just just blossom, and, and and it really comes down to the character and who we are being. Are we are being? Are we? Are we? coming into our true, authentic, divine self along the way. I love that. I love that. <clears throat> so a few years ago, I don't know what it was, but um, I, I'm self-employed, everything I do. <clears throat> and I had not done my taxes correctly. Like I didn't a lot for something. And the tax bill coming in was going to be uh, many thousands, many thousands of dollars. And I wasn't prepared for it. And I was a little shocked. But you know, when I got the shock of that news, I just felt okay about it. I'm just like, it's going to be all right. Like, I just know the universe is conspiring for my best interest and I, I'm going to be provided for it. And I'm not sure how, but I know that it, that I will be. And what ended up happening, and this is so weird, but I do feel like it's true. Um, we had a Volkswagen Passat <laughs> and it was that year when Volkswagen was being investigated for emissions or whatever. And they offered that you could return your vehicle for full price, what you paid for it. And we had other vehicles and I'm like, it just so happened that when we took that vehicle back, we ended up getting a different vehicle, but the money we got back from returning it was exact, almost exactly to the dollar to the cents, what I had to pay in my tax bill. And to me, there just does seem to be this greater story that's being told universally with spirit, like spirit. And I do believe that there is enough for everybody. And I do believe that spirit has got my back, the universe has my back. And I feel like when you have a really solid mindset, that's not necessarily even specific, like, the universe has my back in this area, but I just know it. When you have that, boy, does it end up being true. Do you know what I yeah, mean? For sure. Yeah. And it, it could be honestly, like you're, you're down to the wire and you're like, where's the next client coming from? And instead of going into fear, which is just going to repel it, that's the best time to just start tuning in, find a meditation that's going to support you and really going inward and start a vegan action, of course, but really clearing up that mind because all of that fear base is just going to start clogging it up and it's going to prolong it. So yeah, when you can really be in that energy, like, Hey, you know what? I I've got faith. Mm -hmm. you know, that's been some of my biggest tests in my relationship with money is, is stepping into faith 
And the more I've stepped into faith, the more things have shown up for me, the more my world has become more and more abundant. And so, um, you know, it, it is important because I think maybe for a lot of the listeners, it might be, hey, where's my next client coming from? And it is about figuring out, you know, how is my mindset and how is my energy around this right now? And when you go meta and you zoom out, doesn't it all kind of come back to your understanding of who you are in relation to source energy, in relation to the universe? I think people feel so lost in this 3D matrix Maya re reality, whether we're, we're just so immersed in illusion and we forget that, hey, I'm divine. I'm like a child of God. God gave his angels charge over me. Like this is a universe that's been orchestrated and constructed for my benefit. When you orient from the place of your divine self, like all of these other things really are added unto you with a kind of an ease. But so many people don't, they don't have that orientation in this world. They don't know that about themselves. Yeah, and you know, and that's a dance. That's a constant dance, right? It's never gonna be like, hey, I've got it. it honestly, yes. because it, it is, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, having a natural experience. And, and, and it, so there, we're going to feel this tug and pull. We're always going to feel this tug and pull. And so it is this beautiful dance, but the more we can get grounded in it, knowing that, you know what, this is an illusion and, but I'm here. So mm -hmm. let's, <laughs> let's figure this out, <laughs> you know? Right. And that's yeah. where your meditation and your different exercises and practices can keep you rooted in that divine yeah. self and like your actual purpose in this world. Um, you mentioned, or I, I, I mentioned in your bio, but I do see that you are involved in philanthropy. Um, I guess, again, you have your nonprofit organization, Wealth Living. Can we talk a little bit about that? Like, how did you come into that? And you want to bring peace and all of this. How do you do that? Yeah, that's so great. Thanks for, for that. That, um, uh... Gosh, all these things are such a gift from God, you know, it's just, and this is another thing I just like to say is the more we can get really clear and not be about the, no the noise around us, we can really listen in for our true gifts and talents and what God's calling us, you know, and what the universe is calling us for, because there's, we're here for a reason. Each of us is uniquely designed. And so really, really listening in, you know, well, wealth living was this, uh, you know, I'm in Costa Rica. I've been here two years. I, oh, okay. I got the, the call from spirit in 2020, uh, which was a leap in faith to mm -hmm. get rid of all my stuff and come to Costa Rica. I've never been to Costa Rica before. So, you know, there was some fear that came up with that. And uh, well, I'm here two years later <laughs> and it's just a, a, a miraculous, but I did this amazing meditation um, before leaving California to come to Costa Rica. And at the end, I just had this beautiful vision and I didn't know really what it was. And so over time, over the course of, uh, you know, me being here, all these, all these, you know, all these ideas were coming, coming up around this, uh, what, what is now wealth living. And so it's, it's just amazing just when we can really listen and tune in and just take these nuggets of information, how they can start compiling together. So wealth living, uh, W E L L T H. Uh, we are uh, an academy. We are actually uh, designed, have programs designed to create leaders through healing and learning new ways of conscious living. Because again, we know this world is filled with external systems that are making us unhealthy, unhappy, and disconnected. And so how can we come back to learning things that really hone in into our internal system? Yeah, of course, external things are important. We need, the, need those things in this world but really coming back into our internal guidance system and our mind, body, and spirit and connecting those so we can be in true alignment with who we are in this world. So a lot of times we're, we're chasing things that aren't really serving us and aren't, aren't really in alignment. We end up feeling that in our health and in and, and our finances and in so many different areas. So the immersion program we have is here in Costa Rica, and we do that intentionally because this this mama of a place is very healing. This mm -hmm. land is so healing. And so when we can really remove people from their, their environment and bring them in amongst the nature here in Costa Rica, that just adds to the, uh, the amplification of the curriculum that we have in our program. How fun. That sounds really exciting. Do you work with people one-on-one -on -one as well? Like if they wanted mentorship or what, what, what kind of things do you offer? 
Uh, as far as the Make Money Your Partner with the book series, people can do the books on their own, or mm -hmm. I, I encourage people to do study groups, right? Do a book club. Uh, but I do offer programs that support people if they're wanting more of a one on one uh, environment. I, I support them in, in, in that because uh, the one on one experience, obviously, well, it's one on one, we're able to dive in much deeper. Uh, and then as far as wealth living, there's, there's, uh, we've got facilitators, a board of director, we've got the, the seven day immersion program that's here. Uh, we will eventually have other programs that are, that are available for people. Uh, so if people are looking for, for that, they can go to that website. And if they're looking for more, more stuff around there, um, around the make money your partner mm -hmm. or stuff, then they can go to the other website. So for make money your partner content, we go to bethdana.com. Beth L. Dana. Beth L. Dana. Beth L. Dana link in the description right. of the video or the podcast. And for the wealth living, the link for that is? Uh, wealthliving.com. That's W-E-L-L-T-H-L-I-V-I-N-G.com. All right. Link in the description okay. as well for that. Um, I wanted to ask you just to funny well an interesting question um if i have a psychic on or an intuitive i'm always like give me a prediction for 2023 since we have you um and there's so much rumbling uh, on the economy and what's going to happen next year really over the next couple two or three years do you have any advice for us do you, do you have any ideas about what might be coming um up in the next year with regard to recession etc and any practical advice you could offer us to get stable now mm -hmm. Well, I think we're long overdue for a correction. That's for certain. And so it's it it's gonna happen. Oh, and, and we're probably like in the predictions are, are, are that it'll happen in, in 2023. Um, so it's just a matter of time uh, because we are a long overdue. Um, the best thing that we can ever do is is become sovereign um, and lean on community. So again, Prepare yourself now because something is going to happen, right? Of course, I'm, I'm I'm not predicting. I don't have a crystal ball, but the fact is that our markets are cyclical and we're long overdue. And if they're talking about it, it's going to happen. I'm sure, mm -hmm. right? And so the first thing we'll start probably feeling, and we always generally feel it in the areas of real estate, and then from real estate, you'll end up starting to feel it, and then it that you know that's very similar to what's happened in the past. So. Um, just the best thing you can do is prepare yourself the best you can. So whatever that might look like, if you're, you know, if you're in a job, unfortunately, there's not a lot of security even in, in, in a job, right? So it's, it's really looking at how can I take care of myself right now with where I'm at and lean on community. Mm -hmm. We, what, what's happened in our world is there's been such divide and such such segregation and separation. And so how can we all come together? So if you're in a position right now where you're like, hey, I've got six, nine months before maybe this recession hits, how can I collaborate with people? How can maybe we do something together to support each other that's going to uplift us right now because something's going to happen? Mm hmm that's that's a really great piece of advice um when you say you think something's going to happen do you think it's on par intuitively like with 2008 or are we talking about like the great depression well like, i i yeah it's <laughs> i mean you don't i mean and we're not going to hold you to it i'm just wondering what you think yeah well <laughs> i i i think it, it'll probably happen similar to 2008 mm -hmm. and you know, maybe it'll last a little longer than 2008, yeah. you know, that might, it just might, might be that, um, because we've got a lot of different variables in, in place right now. And, you know, uh, unfortunately <laughs> there's, there's a lot of players, um, that are, uh, that play on, on a lot of these times right now. So, um, you know, recessions aren't necessarily times to be fearful either because, Recessions make for great opportunity too. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to, yes, there might be some, there's going to be something that'll happen, how long it will be, who knows, but it could be as, as, as worse as, you know, 2008. And there's great opportunity that can come from, from a recession. So I don't want to put fear into it. 
Yeah. Look at this as an opportunity to grow and expand, right? Like be ahead of the game, be proactive. Don't be reactive. I think that's what happens a lot is mm -hmm. that we wait. Oh, it might happen. Don't wait. <laughs> like <laughs> let's be proactive. So gain your community, start collaborating, you know, set yourself in the, in the best possible way now so that you can uh, ride through the recession in a much higher frequency and vibration and, and ride it through. And you, you might find really great opportunities for yourself because you're in that energy during that time of recession. So really take, you know, take care of your energy during this time. You know, and a great way to get started doing that is getting the make money your partner books and doing the exercises mm -hmm. and like really shifting your mindset and getting into yeah. that solid space. Um, one comment that I have just as a noob, because I, I'm really not well versed in any of this, but the real estate market is so interesting to me right now because, of course, the interest rates are so high, but the prices are still high right? It's slowing down, but like the prices aren't really going down for the most part across the country. And you have a lot of people who are in their present day homes like me, who have such a low interest rate on my mortgage, at, but I want to move, but there's no way I'm going to move <laughs> when, when the interest rates are this high. Um, and then all of these corporations buying up so many of the houses that it, they can just buy it all cash and then driving up the price and then the rents. And I know that there's been reports that like Gen Z, the, the younger folks are just wishing and hoping for a market, uh, for a, a housing crash, because then they can maybe buy a home for themselves. But even so, like this is, it's different, I think, than 2008, because they don't necessarily project that even if it crashes, that the prices are going to be much different or the interest rates. Have you heard anything about that? I want to move. I'm in North Texas. I want to go up to Colorado which is getting more and more expensive um, every day, but I just don't want to leave what I've got because I don't want to make a bad investment. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's kind of like the, the trickle effect, right? If companies start laying off people, they start losing their jobs, they're not going to be able to pay their mortgage. What are people going to, they're not going to, the, 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 the housing prices will go down. So mm -hmm. if they're talking about a recession, real estate market will be, naturally affected right because yeah the prices are going up but again it's gonna need to to correct at some some point and so uh you know buying at a high isn't always always great right so <laughs> no, it isn't <laughs> um yeah so i, I again I, I, it's the fear that gets pumped in a lot of times like oh you gotta buy now or you gotta buy now or the prices are gonna go up yeah well eventually they're gonna go down too because if somebody, if companies crumble, I mean, we're seeing it with the tech world right now. Mm -hmm. They've had tons of layoffs. Mm -hmm. So these people are probably not going to be able to find jobs for a while, right? And so it, it's it's going to start having the, the trickle effect, right? Where people aren't going to be able to afford their mortgages and then mm -hmm. they're going to have to sell. And and so that that could affect the, the housing market. That is the universal law of rhythm, which I am reading in the Kabbalion on my other mm. podcast, <laughs> but it's just all it the cycle of things. It just goes, the pendulum is going to swing this way. It's going to swing back. It will happen. Um, but yeah, I, I'm personally inclined to just hang on and just wait. Yeah. You've got a low <laughs> interest rate, girl. <laughs> yeah. Under 2%, like one something. Yeah, so I'm like, I mean, come on. The thing is, is if the prices are high right now in your area mm -hmm. and you have buyers, Mm -hmm. Look at it as an opportunity of, hey, maybe I can sell and mm -hmm. then maybe go where I want to go and rent for a little bit. And mm -hmm. then, you know, so. Right. But that's the mindset of like, where's the opportunity as opposed to like, what's, what's the bad thing that's happening, which is what you're all about is changing that mindset. Yeah. Well, Beth, Dana, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you for taking us to school on money and money consciousness. Again, I think uh, we need it now more than ever. If you are interested in learning more about Beth, Dana, go to BethLDana.com. All the links for all the things are in the descriptions of the video and the podcast. And just want to thank you so much with much gratitude. Thank you so much for showing up for the Life Magnetics podcast. Thank you so much. Grateful for you. It was fun.